What's up, Grizzlies fans? I'm Megan Triplett, and I have some exciting news to share. We have a new app. That's right. It's a three-in-one experience that you don't want to miss out on. Check this out. The app will keep you up to date on all of the Grizzlies stats and latest news. If you're looking to see what events are going on at FedEx Forum, that can all be found on the app as well. Plus, if you want to see more of me and the rest of the Grind City Media team, like Chris Vernon, Lang Whitaker, and Mike Wallace, there's a section for all that. It is 365 days of content to keep you in touch with all things Grizzlies, FedEx Forum, and GCM. And did I mention you can also purchase and manage tickets on the app? The app does it all. Download it now. Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non-emergency pre-hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee-owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. Have you been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. Toyota Thon is on. Get $1,000 customer cash on any adventurous new 2021 RAV4, including RAV4 Hybrid. Or you can lease a new RAV4 LE for just $199 a month for 39 months with $29.99 due at signing. With approved credit through TFS, tax title and license extra. That's just $199 a month for a new 2021 RAV4. Offers end November 30th. Call 1-888-36-TOYOTA for details or go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. In everything we do, defensive activity, offensive execution, play together, have an edge about us. Just play with an edge. Play with an edge and play together. Durant, blocked for Jaren, and blocked by Jay. Dylan Brooks with authority. Tyus Jones to Brandon Clark. A turn and gun. He got it. Jones for three. Jones blocked by Jaren. Yeah, stay together, Blue, stay together. Way to roll me, kid. And leave it out there. John Durant with elevation. Welcome to Rise and Grinds with Jessica and Megan, live on GrindCityMedia.com from the American Home Shield Studio at FedEx Forum. Now, here's your hosts, Jessica Benson and Megan Triplett. Good morning, good morning, happy Wednesday. Welcome into Rise and Grind, Megan Triplett and CJ Hurt in studio. Jessica, a new location. I don't see the beach house in the background. No, we are at the, the Memphis <laughs> Mansion. Oh, Slash apartment. <laughs> Ooh, she said mansion, yeah. CJ. She went ahead yeah. and threw it out there. I've never, I've never seen, I have never seen Jessica's apartment, so she might be in a mansion. I'm not sure. I've never been invited over because of COVID-19, but you know, <laughs> now we know you got a beach house and a mansion slash apartment. So you are there. Yes. Yes. I'm back in Memphis. It feels good to, good to be back. It was nice to, to be at the beach house, but nice to be in a little warmer weather, less rain, always a good mm -hmm. thing. I will say I have. I have a bone to pick with Memphis people. And it's not just okay. Memphis people, because I know people travel from all over. Mm -hmm. the, the flying experience, I was very nervous. Like, this was kind of an unexpected trip. I was very nervous to fly, did not want to. I had wonderful flights across the board. People were very respectful, socially distanced. Everyone kind of, everyone wore their mask, which was nice. Last night on my flight to Memphis, do you know how many people were wearing bandanas as masks? It is November, people. We know bandanas are not the option. Go get yourself some of those surgical masks. 
So that's mm-hmm. my that's my only gripe coming back. The flight to Memphis was tough. Especially, especially you know, as you as you mentioned, especially in November when I mean at this point masks are is it's like the new street hot dog pizza you can get them wherever they are selling them wherever i know in new york city they literally are selling masks on the street so it's not a hard thing to find every store has a mask yeah i used to when i used to go home my mom would always get me a starbucks gift card that was just like her thing now she gets me masks like Mm -hmm. uh, i got a new usc mask so that's cool but yeah go get yourself a real mask that means that usc mask will be that that means that usc mask will be pulled out at some point on this yes. show, everyone get prepared and get ready. Yes, maybe this week. <laughs> well, <laughs> hopefully <let's>... they play. <laughs> yes, hopefully they do play. And a, te- uh, a league that we've been hoping that will play, and we've been kind of like teasing it, has been official. The Board of Governors has unanimously voted that the season will start on December 22nd. CJ's looking at me like very, very odd right now, and I'm trying to figure out why he's No, I'm trying off. to figure out what color the sweater is. I'm sorry. Oh, it's like a green color? It's oh, we are green? kind of matching. It's like a, it's like a teal. Teal? Okay, cool. Lime green? Maybe not. It's not lime green. I don't know. No, it's the, I'm sorry. I, I hate interrupting the show. Oh, I was so I'm thrown off. I thought something I'm was sorry. going on. You know, I we thought were, it was we've like been having technical difficulties. Blue, gray. I don't know what to call that sweater color. My fault. I really don't know either. It's just a Adidas. I, I don't know. I thought you had the Ivy Park for a second. I thought you like ended up getting something. It looks like that kind of nice blue on my screen. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was no. excited for you. Now I'm Girl, not. You know I'm, I'm financially woke, but I will say Ivy Park is a drop two coming out, and they do have black. So, and that's those, are, it's like a black and gold color that's coming out. I think it's next week. Those are my favorite colors. So I might treat myself since it's the holidays and I don't pay rent. I might actually get something from drop number two. All right, let's get to some NBA. We were, we were talking about it and then got all thrown off. Well, we have made it official. The Board of Governors have voted that the season will start on December 22nd. And we do know that it'll be a 72-game schedule. And then obviously, they have also agreed on the CBA. We talked about all the logistics and the numbers yesterday. But it has made it official. The NBA season, it's now a hustle and a bustle. Yeah, it's like you get report number one, report number two, and finally you get the official, official word from the NBA yesterday, Mm -hmm. and we've talked about it a million times. We'll continue to talk about it because it is the reality now that you're starting the NBA season in a little more than a month, and you have a lot to get done before then, but I'm excited. We finally have it. That 72-game schedule, as I'm watching you know, later on in the show and off the grind, we'll talk about more college football problems galore and like seeing how COVID-19 has affected schedules period 72 feels like a very big number all of a sudden to me um but i do think there's some understanding and flexibility and and you just got to roll with the punches as they come to you but we will circle that 72 and we will hope that we get as many as possible this season yeah and something that we're also circling is that the free agent negotiations will begin on november 20th at 6 p.m eastern that's just two days after the draft and signings can start at 12 1 p.m eastern on november 22nd when you look at all this and coming off of the con- some congratulations news of you know they we have got a roadmap i guess you can say a blueprint of what the nba season can look like we also learned yesterday that there's some negotiations according to brian woodhorse of, of espn chris paul and oklahoma city thunder they're talking with the phoenix suns about a possible trade nothing is in set these conversations are ongoing but they're going to continue to gather traction but there's no deal imminent okay i have to say it was so refreshing to get off the plane yesterday i didn't have wi-fi the wi-fi didn't work mm. i'm one of those people who always buys wi-fi because i get i, I like to stay tapped in but <laughs> no oh my gosh i, I can't never hit. I don't think I've ever bought okay. Wi-Fi. I have okay. never because well, one because I think there's there's someone that has like the, the three thirty minutes. I would do the free thirty minutes or a free hour, and after that point, you're like, mm, guess I got nothing so else to I do. Have, I have minor flight anxiety that has okay. grown with age, and so there's something about being like connected and being able to text. Usually, if you have the option where you can buy the Wi-Fi where you only text, I'll buy that mm-hmm. one. I just like having communication to the world below while I am up above. My mom was a flight attendant. She can't believe that I ended up with flight anxiety. But I didn't have Wi-Fi, period, on the plane yesterday. So I was just doing my own thing, watching the Queen's Gambit on Netflix, and I land, and I get service back, and the first thing I see pops up is this trade report that potentially Chris Paul could go to the Suns. And it felt so good to Mm -hmm. land, 
and be like, oh, we're talking NBA trades. And that is one of the most fun parts of the NBA. I like this potential. I think it's huge if you could get a backcourt of Devin Booker and Chris Paul in Phoenix. It was just last week that there was a report from Ryan Rosillo that Devin Booker apparently wants out of Phoenix. He said it's the worst kept secret in the NBA that he's already looking to get out. So Phoenix, meanwhile, is like, all right, what can we do to keep him here? And to keep him here, you need to win now. And by adding Chris Paul, you have a legit chance of winning now and getting to the playoffs and ending that 10-year drought. Yeah, what Chris Paul brings to the court himself, being like that superstar point guard, that, you know, his name at least, you know, says it best. And for Phoenix, they're in this restructuring zone of, yes, they had a great bubble experience. They went a no. Phoenix is trying to build this, you know, they've done renovations to the arena. They're getting this brand new practice facility. If you can get another superstar splash, if you have Devin Booker, DeAndre Ayton, and Chris Paul added to the mix, we know that, the Thunder have normally have always helped out the players and kind of like, you know, told them where they could possibly go and have a say so in it. They did that with Russell Westbrook. They did it with James Harden. They, they just did it with Paul George. Phoenix, as we all know, Chris Paul, he has a house in L.A. His family has stayed in L.A. due to schooling. That's a quick flight from Phoenix to L.A. If he wanted to be closer Earlier, a month or two ago, we thought that the Clippers were in a big contention. If you want to go back to the Clippers and play with Doc Rivers, Monty has the experience with Chris Paul. He coached him for a year when, they were the, when, he, when he was with the Pelicans. There's something that could be there. I think Chris Paul is a hot grab to get. I do think that looking at Chris Paul, if, if he does have a say-so in it, if I'm Chris Paul, I want a championship ring. Um, what's your more likely chance to get that? Because we know Chris Paul is he's an older vet. He's been, an all, he's been an all-star for many, many years. He doesn't have as many years left of, of playing. Do you want to go to a Phoenix Suns who kind of surprised everybody in the bubble, but most likely we don't have them in our top two teams in the West. We have them possibly making the playoffs next year, but I don't know if they, you know, I don't have them like winning the championship. Yeah, no, I think that's a really good point. And just because you add Chris Paul, I don't even see them winning the West, like you said. Um, I do think he kind of embraced that leadership role, too, and there's obviously a potential to do that with such a young team like Phoenix. But, you know, there's other teams who need a point guard who could want him as well. Like, there's the word on the Bucks and the Sixers. Do you get a reunion with his former GM, Daryl Morey? There's a lot of options out there for Chris Paul. I think that's the exciting part for him is, like, he's put himself in a position based on how he showed up in OKC. He was able to stay healthy. You know, he is in his mid-30s. Is he going to be 100% healthy the rest of the way? You have to expect some level of concern some drop off but like his basketball IQ what he brings to a team is huge and for a young team like the Suns I just think it would be so invaluable for them the Suns need Chris Paul more than Chris Paul needs the Suns that is very true and since you loved getting off the plane and hearing more about some trade news we also learned early this morning from Tim McMahon of ESPN that James Harden and Russell Westbrook have expressed concerns about uncertainty of Rockets immediate future the sources have told Woj and himself, and now there have been no trade requests have been made, and Harden in particular remains engaged with front office in personnel discussions. The Houston Rockets, they're coming from a group that's probably going to have the same guys, the same starters there because there's not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to you know bargaining agreements and, and, and contracts. And they also now getting a new head coach. They're getting a new coaching staff. A lot of new things are coming. So when you hear that James Harden and Russell Westbrook are not happy, I'm not surprised. I'm not, sur- I'm not surprised they're not happy. I don't think they're happy in Orlando. I don't think that they, they, have, they have not been happy. So what, what happens from this? I have no idea because a lot of money. Those guys have some big contracts and who can pick them up? And we know James Harden and Russell Westbrook, they want to win a championship. Yeah, this was like a very unsurprising tweet to see roll through this morning. Like, I kind of just expected at some point we would be having this conversation going into next season, Mm -hmm. especially after Steven Silas last week. He was kind of preaching like this unpredictability with the Rockets. And if you're James Harden, do you really want unpredictability right now? Maybe not. They'll at least see what the options are out there for him. Yeah, we'll wait. We will wait and see. And since the basketball, we have a blueprint of what it could look like. It's time to bring back our favorite segment, Daily Grind, and talk about our very own Memphis Grizzlies. John Morant yesterday, he was on a commercial shoot, and he had some time during a break to answer some questions, some fan questions on Twitter. And we got to learn a little bit more about Ja Morant. Let's take a look at some of his tweets that came out. One of the, one of the great tweets were his funniest teammate. He said, Tyus, are you shocked by this, Jessica? Okay, I haven't been around 
the team enough to know who the funniest teammate is. I kind of would have thought Jaron. Like, I feel like that's the easy answer because he's kind mm-hmm. of a goofball sometimes, so everyone always throws that out. So I'm excited to, like, see Tyus as the jokester, as the funniest teammate. So it did kind of surprise me. It surprised me. Uh, Tyus is very quiet, especially when it comes to the locker room, and even at practices. He's very quiet, so even if you're around them, you don't see this side of Tyus. I do think Tyus must keep this like in on lock when he's just around the players and just around themselves because he's so reserved. And you know now he's a father. He kind of just fits into this you know more mature mold. And I can't. I I'm surprised that he's a funny. I'm like oh, it's always Tyus a quiet a ones. Quiet yeah. ones you got to keep an eye on. Like mm-hmm. I, I have a couple of friends in my friend group, and when the quiet one begins to speak. It's like everybody shut up because he's about to say something funny. It's that dry, sneaky humor. Like they know they're funny. They don't want all the attention, though. So they sit back in the cut and, and make fun of you under their breath. But if you say, hey, repeat that, you'll fall out <laughs> on the floor laughing. <laughs> well, we'll if you to- miss the joke the first time, you're done. Yeah, Tyus responded and said, okay, 12, we, we, we definitely be wild and don't we? And so he agreed. And so maybe we'll have to get Tyus on the show and just kind of like break down that wall and say, give us a joke. Make us laugh, Tyus. Go. Put him on the spot. You can't, you can't do that. that Nobody's so funny loud. that way. <laughs> Nobody's funny when you say, hey, do something funny. Do something funny. Make me laugh. <laughs> Put him on the spot. <laughs> That's like the worst way to make someone laugh. But he does have an adorable baby. And I love he the does. pictures of his baby as well. Uh, the next one kind of surprised me. Uh, he was asked, better shoe collection, him or Rob Fisher? And John Morant saying, me for sure. <laughs> Rob Fisher has a pretty pretty fly shoe game. So that's big on jaw. I think they have a different style of shoes. So maybe they can each kind of own their own category. Yeah, it's it's two totally different categories of the shoe style. So it depends on like what you consider fly. Obviously, we know Fish. He's got the old school He's got, you know, it's more the business and it's Rob got southern. them Stacey Adams. Yeah. They, they look like <laughs> them shiny Stacey. He gets things like specially made that you might go to somewhere off summer and you yeah. get some like some crocodile, some crazy colors. The pointy toes. Yes. So and then you have Jaw, who's who's really like this 2020. I got all the kicks in the world. Kicks come to me just like left and right. When you are in the locker room, Jaw has so many shoe boxes just like lined up and piled up and so it depends on your definition what's what's considered fly i'm not surprised i think i'm gonna go with jaw because that fits more of my style but fish fits more of like the old school southern style grown and sexy is what we call that <laughs> yes <laughs> Definitely. there's this store there's this store on maine that i always pass when i'm walking to walgreens and mm-hmm. they have shoes like that and i'm always like should i get chris a pair and i'm like no i should not get chris a pair. <laughs> you should not my- my dad rocks them, but I know Chris and my dad are two different, like two different generations too. But my dad does rock them too as well. I come from that, like that Southern style. When you go to church, like first Sunday of May or you know third Sunday of the month, like that's when you bring out the best shoes at church. So you could, Chris could do it. I could see Chris rocking them. Okay, let's let's try it. We'll see if there's a pair that works for him. Uh, Joe was asked favorite all time NBA uniform. He said our throwbacks, the Grizzlies throwbacks. I agree here. Oh, yeah, I definitely agree. And I'm not surprised by this. I think he's mentioned it before. And it's great that he is like kind of teasing his way because obviously last season was all dedicated to, is you know, the, the 25th anniversary coming into this season. It's our 20th anniversary. And we're going we're to chance to see even we'll see another throwback jersey for our 20 years right here in Memphis. So if he likes that throwback, I know he's going to love rocking this year's throwback jersey. I just love teal. I never knew I loved teal so much until these throwback jerseys. And I was like, man, I really crave for the days where teal was a primary color Mm -hmm. in fashion. So props to the Grizzlies throwbacks. Good taste. Not everybody can rock teal. I will say that. What I did learn learn that day at FedEx Forum, we all had our teal on. I love seeing it. But I saw some people, I'm like, ugh. And it, w- it wasn't their color. It might, what, it's like not everybody can rock it. I can't rock every color of teal either. So I'm not throwing anybody out. There's a certain type of teal and how you rock it is very, very, it's very key. And there's a time and a place. Like mm-hmm. I'm not asking for teal bridesmaid dresses out yes. here. Like we don't, we don't need that. That would not work for, for my bridesmaid. But yeah, mm-hmm. everyone has a time and a place for teal. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. We also learned it yesterday. Let's check out the next tweet that if basketball was gone, what sport would you excel in? Jaw said baseball. And, you know, I, you know, I know that I'm not, like, the craziest person about baseball. And Jaw being Jaw, I mean, the guy is, like, talented. He's athletic. I was shocked by this. I was like, okay, did Jaw, like, love baseball? That's that, that something that he has another second passion for? Can we see him be a dual athlete one day? 
I feel like he just wants to like show off his hops and get some sick web gem grab in the outfield mm-hmm. or like do like this sick slide home. I don't know. I, I just feel like he would want to be the flashy baseball player. I also think he would probably have the best bat flip in the game. I'm oh. just calling it if he did play baseball. Definitely. And then, you know, now I'm like, we need, we need to get Ja Mookie Betts together. Mookie did sit courtside at a game. That Ooh. might be something that we don't know about. You know, we know Mookie is from Nashville. Maybe that there's could be a, some, type of, some type of connection. We need to get a baseball game with them. Some type of, like, they're going to have, like, the best chain, rocking the best kicks. That's a, that's a duo matchup I want to see. How did Ja perform in the, in the Grizzlies kickball situation like was he I, good i don't remember i don't remember either who because they, they said that scooney was the best scooney yeah uh, assistant coach scooney yeah. so i feel like if you if he wasn't mentioned <laughs> maybe he wasn't we'll have to ask him how he did in kickball but we do know that they they do love to play they played kickball they played softball those are the team activities that um coach jenkins loves to do so we have to ask somebody how how is is job really good or is that just a, a statement saying yeah. hey basketball wasn't a thing i guess i'll play baseball well maybe he's better with like the foot than mm-hmm on the arms but yeah I, I also want rise and grind to get in on the kickball action i'm just saying that's one of my main I'm, goals i'm not gonna be good at it I'm when we not. can get back out wait wait, 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 i don't wait, think wait. i'm gonna be good at it all that leg you got you can't kick a ball that's i don't know i haven't say. played kickball since literally elementary school so i really can't tell you but i don't think i'm gonna be good at it i think my i i think i know my strengths i don't have a urge. i appreciate you evaluating that if i am but yeah. in some way a team captain I will take that into account when we're picking teams going you. back and forth. Thank you. I won't I be mad at you. That. But I could be that I could be like like that silent person who's like you just never expected to be good. And then I come yeah. out and be like, oh, look at me. Didn't know I had that in myself. Gained never leg know. strength with, with age. You never know. It could happen. That's true. Could That's true. Do we have uh, any more, last, we more tweets? We have one more? Yeah, one more. Oh. How many Nike track suits you got? A hundred plus. That is just impressive. I have nothing else to say. I know. I have been trying and begging to do a Audi 101 in Jaws Closet. COVID happened, messed everything up, but I, I stay tuned. I'm hoping that we can see all these tracksuits. I, I would love to see it, but I'm not surprised that he's got 100. I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm, if, if I'm Jaws, I'm sure that that's everyone's Christmas gift. What do you get for Christmas birthday? A Nike sweatsuit. That, like, that just makes sense. That's nice, though. At least people know. <laughs> I'd rather true. that than the people who try to guess something for you and fail. So yeah, shout out to true. Job for staying on brand. That is very, very true. All right. We have so much more to get to when we come up. We got to talk a- some more about the SEC and that C word, Corona virus. We'll have all that after the break. Once a week, get your basketball fix with Talkin' Grizz featuring me, Kelsey Wright Johnson, and media from around the NBA as we discuss draft topics, prospects, and more. Connect with Grind City Media on all their social channels, subscribe to Grind City Media YouTube, and follow Grind City Media on Twitter and Instagram to stay up to date with all things Grizzlies. Have gold? Bring it to King. Grab everything you'll never wear again. King will buy all your gold jewelry or trade it for new jewelry and get 20% more. Have gemstones or diamonds you don't want to sell, sentimental items passed down to you. King can use your gems or diamonds and create a new work of art designed with your own taste and style. Trade in your gold, let King design something that's all yours or sell us your gold. There's no better time than now during gold buying and custom design days at King Furs and Fine Jewelry in Laurelwood where custom design is our specialty. In a time when preventative care is more important than ever, routine oral and eye checkups could save your life. That's why Delta Dental of Tennessee offers dental and vision plans starting at less than a dollar a day. Our large network of dentists can detect 120 signs and symptoms of diseases before they're life-threatening. Keep your health care costs low and your health at an all-time high with the power of preventive dental and vision plans from Delta Dental of Tennessee. Choose your health first. Choose Delta Dental. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday and for the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. 
What's up, Grizzlies fans? I'm Megan Triplett, and I have some exciting news to share. We have a new app. That's right. It's a three-in-one experience that you don't want to miss out on. Check this out. The app will keep you up to date on all of the Grizzlies' stats and latest news. If you're looking to see what events are going on at FedEx Forum, that can all be found on the app as well. Plus, if you want to see more of me and the rest of the Grind City Media team, like Chris Vernon, Lang Whitaker, and Mike Wallace, there's a section for all that. It is 365 days of content to keep you in touch with all things Grizzlies, FedEx Forum, and GCM. And did I mention you can also purchase and manage tickets on the app? The app does it all. Download it now. Ooh, a tad grand January to December. Put that snow in the summer. Get it looking like the winter. Ooh, a tad, ooh, a tad, ooh, a tad, ooh, a tad grand. Ooh, a tad, ooh, a tad, ooh, a tad. Alrighty, welcome back to Rise and Grind. Let's get to some off the grind news and let's start in college football and talk about the SEC. Well, we talked about it yesterday. We, we said that, that, that there were some games in jeopardy. Not only has the Auburn Mississippi State game been postponed, but we did learn yesterday that the Texas A&M at Tennessee and the Alabama at LSU have all been postponed due to positive tests and contact tracing and subsequent quarantine of individuals within the LSU and A&M football programs. All this means that a lot of these teams do not have enough of the scholarship players to have enough to put out there on the field. And we know that that's one of the SEC protocols. So those games have been postponed. When we're talking about looking at when those games could be played, we, do, we did find out that all the SEC athletic directors, all 14 of them, agreed to December 19th. That's the weekend and the day of the SEC championship game. If they're not playing in it, that game could be those games could be pushed to that weekend because, as we know, LSU already has a game scheduled for that December 12th. But what that looks like if Alabama's already playing in the SEC championship game... We still have to wait to see what's most likely they will be playing in the SEC championship game. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're now in cancellation territory if you're the SEC. You just kind of have to think that that's the road that they're on. We talked about Greg Sankey saying yesterday, obviously you want smooth sailing, but some of the things that might have looked like solutions six weeks ago now look out of the question here on November 11th. Uh, I do think it's funny because we were so excited for Alabama LSU and the Masters to share a Saturday and then LSU was really bad and now the game's not even going to happen but we still do have the Masters in November coming up so at least we have something I don't think I don't think that's at <laughs> risk of not being played this weekend but bottom line I, I'm not worried about Alabama making the college football playoff long term like Alabama is what it is we've seen Alabama um, in fact, they probably benefit a little bit if this game is ultimately just straight up canceled. They have a bye week the week before the SEC championship game. Meanwhile, you look at Florida, who's at the top of the East right now. They would have to play that week if I'm Florida. I don't love that. Overall, it just kind of becomes a logistics nightmare for the playoff committee because depending on how many games Alabama plays, how many games you know the second best team in the SEC ends up playing, then what are you looking with? a one-loss Clemson, or if Notre Dame loses to Clemson in the ACC championship game, a one-loss Notre Dame, and what if you have an 11-0 Cincinnati who manages to play all of their games, and the Pac-12, I just keep saying it, but like USC didn't look good, but that said, the whole thing was like the Pac-12 only has a seven-game schedule, well now if more and more conferences might have teams kind of hovering around that seven, eight games this season, what does it all mean? It's just a bit of a mess. Yeah, I mean, the, the college football statement always goes, we remember what you do in November. And I feel as if November, I, we're not going to remember anything because there's, there might not be any games. What we're remembering is that all these positive tests, when you have Texas A&M, they, they only have three active COVID-19 tests. However, their athletic director said it's super hard to figure out the contact tracing because when you have a team travel, you have to think about plane, hotel, you know, commuting from, from the, the stadium, all that has to play in factor. So that's why that Texas A&M game had to be uh, postponed because they can't figure out contact tracing when you're, when you're coming back from traveling and you really were all together. Meanwhile, Auburn, Mississippi State, we thought it was, it was because of Mississippi State, but on Tuesday, Auburn had to pause their practices after the Tigers had 12 positive COVID-19 tests within their program. And it's, 
at this point, it's kind of like you're playing like duck, duck, goose, and who, who, who <laughs> doesn't have coronavirus? And I think at this point, it's like every everyone dealing is dealing with something, just like the country is going through right now. Yeah, and, and on top of that, you have Sam Pittman's second test confirmed that he is positive with COVID nineteen. So Barry Odom will have to coach Arkansas against Florida this coming weekend. And you look at all of these games in jeopardy. You look at you know backup coaches having to take over. It's just, it's another weekend in college football this year. Like, this, especially in the last two weeks, I think we had, what, 10 games last week, five games so far this week, including the Memphis game, which we'll talk about in just a second. But, like, that's 52 FBS games that have been canceled or postponed this season so far, with a pretty large chunk coming in the last two weeks, which makes sense because we've seen cases rise across the country in the last two weeks. And, like, mm-hmm. we can say it a million times college football is pretty much a direct comparison to the rest of society. So, as more and more people are getting COVID-19 this fall, more and more college students are probably going to get it as well. That includes college football players. They are not in a bubble. That's the bottom line. They are not in a bubble. You just had Halloween. I don't want to like say that players were out and about doing their best Halloween thing, but the situation at LSU, there were some reports that a couple of players might have been out. Um, you have the situation with fans rushing the field at Notre Dame Clemson. It, you, you just don't know where it's coming from. All you all you know at this point is that there's probably going to be at least one cancellation every week or yeah. postponement. Yeah, and then when you have one cancellation every weekend, when it look when it comes to the team. You also might not just have one game canceled, but you could have two games canceled. And that, as you mentioned, that is now affecting the Memphis Navy game. That game has been postponed due to the fact that Navy is still dealing with COVID and and, and contact tracing. Their game last week got postponed, that, that Tulsa game, and now it's coming into two games because as you think about it, if you do your 14-day or 10-day quarantine with different you know conferences and, and their protocols, that doesn't just affect one game, but it could very well affect two games. The Memphis Navy game is now being pushed back as well. Yeah, and with both of these teams, they don't share an open date uh, mm-hmm. down the road, so there's a lot of scheduling shuffling that could perhaps happen, but right now it's, it's not easy, and you're going to have to figure something out. Technically, Memphis is still in contention uh, for the AAC race. I know based on like the eyeball test, maybe not, but record-wise, they certainly are. For Memphis, this is you know this is old hat at this point. Like this is the third time that they've had to deal with postponement or cancellation. They had their own outbreak. They've been there, done that, have the postcard. Um, so we'll see if they're able to get it back on the schedule. Meanwhile, their next game at home will be against. Uh, who is their next Stephen game against F. the home? Stephen F. Austin, mm-hmm. yeah. And so we'll wait and see. That's not a conference game. Could could that game be moved? I don't know. I know. I don't know at this point. It's it's a lot of madness because if you look over to the Pac-12, Jessica, your Pac-12. Cal and Arizona State is in jeopardy of being canceled because of several Golden Bears players remain in quarantine due to contact tracing related to one positive COVID-19 test. As we all know, Cal's last week's game against Washington was canceled. And so now that's affecting the Cal Arizona State as we look as we look ahead to a Saturday and something that we haven't noted just yet is that not only when you get two games potentially canceled, but also when you when you get a chance to come back. A lot of these players, and we've seen it already happen, have not been on the field in a matter of 10 or 10 to 12 days. They have not practiced. They've had to be in quarantine. What that looks like as you not even try to get healthy and get your guys healthy and back out there. But they, you know, we saw with Memphis, like you're going to have some rust. And for Cal, they haven't had a week one yet. (laughs) We haven't got super excited to have a Pac-12. They haven't had a week one yet. And now we're learning that it's possibly it's in jeopardy as of right now. Yeah, for Cal, you have to think about the possibility of this season being in jeopardy, period, based on how strict the Berkeley Health Department is with their contact tracing. I know a lot of coaches around the Pac-12 have spoke up on behalf of Cal and said, listen, if this outbreak was happening within our program, we'd still be playing games. And you had a situation where WSU, just the other day, had positive cases. They were out practicing that evening. So it's the inconsistency around the Pac-12. If you're Cal, I've seen some people joke about it, but it's kind of like a joke with serious undertones do you try to figure out somewhere else to go play this year do you create a mini bubble and I think you know obviously the whole bubble in college football was such a big deal how can we do this with amateur student athletes well 
I think we've kind of shown that we're willing to bend a lot of rules and, and change a lot of things up this season in college football. So that might be Cal's best option is finding somewhere else to play, finding somewhere to kind of quarantine themselves, create their own middle bubble. It just might be too late. Ooh, well, I hope not. I hope not, but it's, you know, we're not, we're not turning a, a, a positive corner right now. You look at me for no. some negativity. I got it. No, I didn't. This is wild. I, I, this is I ridiculous. Didn't know you turned and looked at me like I see Jay's going to be negative. He's got, he's got <laughs> well, it. First and of I all, do. I when, you, it. when you're standing up, I normally know when CJ's standing up and I saw him in the corner of my eye, like, when he's standing up, that means something, like he's got something to say. So I was like, okay, he's Stand standing the up. the whole show. <laughs> <laughs> but you were standing at, like, attention. You were standing at up to attention. Oh, I was, yeah, yes. no, this is ridiculous. This is, <laughs> this is wild for the thought to be, not to say you're wrong, Jessica, because that makes sense. Do a bubble. But in order to do a bubble, you have to collectively bargain for that. And since you don't want to pay college athletes, you don't want to give them that type of leverage, that type of power, you're in this position right here where you can't collectively bargain from Mm -hmm. a a college athlete standpoint. And it's not Cal's fault. It's not the Pac-12's fault that California has been hit really, really hard by this pandemic. And they're trying to do their best to mitigate the exposure and mitigate the risk. Hospitals are overflowing now, right? And California is trying to mitigate all of that by saying, hey, you know what? Maybe college football isn't that important, isn't important enough for us to risk having our, our hospital capacity reach a point where we'll have to turn people away, where we have icebox instead of a morgue because we have that many people dying in our communities from this thing. Maybe that's not really all that important to us. So deal with it. Eat it. You're not in the Big Ten. You can't throw a temper tantrum. You got more reasonable people out there making the rules and, and policies out west. So you just got to eat it if you're a cow in the Pac-12. Mm. Well, but you said well, it best. Deal with it. <laughs> I don't know if I want to say it. We can always always count on CJ for the COVID realness. I will say I'd, I'd forgotten that UTEP even this week, they're playing their game against UAB in Midland, Texas, instead of El Paso because the concerns in El Paso are greater. So, like, there are mm-hmm. teams out there who are making the decision to shift things around. My other thing looking at this was, what do you do about the college football playoff? Like, at this point, I would hope, I don't trust anyone having plans these days, but I would hope there have been conversations about the college football playoff potentially being bubbled with those four teams. Because mm-hmm. when you're just looking at like straight up odds of everyone staying healthy, it's, I mean, the semifinals are January 1st, the championship game January 11th. I would look at some contingency plans. Yep. Looking at some contingency plans is the best way to transition into some college basketball because Duke is looking at some contingency plans plans and, I must say I like it. They hey, announced it. You. I must say they did listen to me. They didn't call me. You know, I got I got a Duke connection about it. They didn't call me, but maybe they're watching the show. But Duke announced yesterday that there will be no fans at their winter sports, which includes basketball, men's and women's basketball. So that means no Cameron Crazies. Cameron Stadium will be empty uh, when the basketball players take the court again. If we do see an ACC schedule, we're still waiting, we're still waiting for all of that. But that has a huge impact because Cameron Crazies they make Cameron Indoor Stadium. Cameron, I you know I have seen several basketball games there I sit when I was there I would sit courtside and sit right behind them you don't know how much blue paint I have gotten on the back of my my shirt I've gotten spit like they are they are loud it is it was one of those like it was a great experience but it's also one of those like I love my job I love my job I'm getting hit I'm okay I love this job it's all good it's all good you can't get spit on you in 2020 that's like big x that's, right there so that's very true out. it is, that is it's going to be so weird i would assume some other schools will take similar approaches so Mm -hmm. some of these like environments in college basketball that are really hard to go and play in um will be very quiet so it'll be very similar to what we saw in the bubble in orlando only it's not in the bubble it's in your home arena but that kind of empty feeling i don't know if they can mix up virtual fans that might just be an nba big money kind of thing but it would be cool to see yeah, and then, you know, and, and you know, Cameron, it's it's older, it's historical, um, it's intimate. It only holds, I think, almost nine thousand fans, barely barely ten thousand fans. If you squeeze them in there, and you have you have that that that, that crow's nest up top where they call the games, where Dickie V will be sitting up there, and that's what makes Cameron Cameron. So it's going to be interesting. I'm okay with it because I know it has to be done. But if you're if you're a coach who has to travel to Duke, you're probably like, oh, that's the last thing I have to worry about because you do know the noise and the madness is is it always affects the game let's get into some breaking college basketball news that is i was shocked to hear about greg marshall and wichita state it's been reported that they are going to uh 
separate in the matter of days. This, this is following a report from former players of Marshall um, saying that they, they were experienced verbal and physical abuse. He has punched players and, had, and put a, a staff member in a chokehold. All this coming out when it's a Greg Marshall who made Wichita State, Wichita State basketball program, who put them on the map, seven NCAA tournament appearances. Um, shocking news to come out of college basketball yesterday. Yeah, I'm going to be real. The only thing that shocked me is that it took them this long. Uh, this was a PR nightmare and also just a terrible situation as you continue to learn more about Greg Marshall. Like, you can't punch players and you can't choke assistant coaches, allegedly, all allegedly. Mm -hmm. And he obviously denies that this happened. But they interviewed, I mean, countless players ended up coming forward after their initial investigation where some players didn't necessarily feel comfortable enough to speak their minds at that time. I think they circled back, interviewed something like 26 former players and kind of settled on a consistent narrative, at least. And, and that's just not OK in college basketball and life in anything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll we will make sure that we are staying up to date on what's going on in Wichita State. Really quickly before we take a break, we want to give a shout out to AZ Fudge. She is committing today. She's announcing it on Instagram. This is the number one girls basketball player in the country coming out of D.C. She has worked out with Steph Curry. She's worked out with Kobe Bryant and Gigi Bryant. She had a close connection to them all. And now we'll figure out where she's choosing to go. She is the first sophomore to ever win the National Gatorade Basketball Player of the Year. And she's gotten some top schools. UConn, UCLA, Maryland was her first offer in sixth grade. So I'm really excited to see where she's choosing to go. This is a special, special guard whose parents coached her um, all throughout her life. Her, both her parents are basketball players so i can't wait on instagram that's at 10 a.m we'll figure out where she's committing to all right coming up after the break we'll have d'angelo williams will join us to preview and talk about the amazing race that's coming on tonight and we'll talk about some nfl news around the league we'll be right back Toyota Thon is on with huge savings on the last of the 2020 Camrys. Get $2,000 customer cash off your best deal on Camry and Camry All Wheel Drive. Get $3,000 off Camry Hybrid. Or you can lease a Camry LE for $199 a month for 30 months with $29.99 due at signing. With approved credit through TFS, tax title and license extra. Offers end November 30th. Call 1 888 36 Toyota for details or go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Have gold? Bring it to King. Grab everything you'll never wear again. King will buy all your gold jewelry or trade it for new jewelry and get 20% more. Have gemstones or diamonds you don't want to sell, sentimental items passed down to you. King can use your gems or diamonds and create a new work of art designed with your own taste and style. Trade in your gold, let King design something that's all yours or sell us your gold. There's no better time than now during gold buying and custom design days at King Furs and Fine Jewelry in Laurelwood where custom design is our specialty. In a time when preventative care is more important than ever, routine oral and eye checkups could save your life. That's why Delta Dental of Tennessee offers dental and vision plans starting at less than a dollar a day. Our large network of dentists can detect 120 signs and symptoms of diseases before they're life-threatening. Keep your health care costs low and your health at an all-time high with the power of preventive dental and vision plans from Delta Dental of Tennessee. Choose your health first. Choose Delta Dental. Have you been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. That's his music. I hear him. I heard him laughing. <laughs> it's time for so our Look. Hey. <laughs> Whoa. I, can I say something before we start? Yes, can you can. Say, yes, you open us up. I, I really have to get this off my chest. So on Wednesday, when I came to work, I had my little, I had my little cover on because I mm -hmm. had a little pre-election, I mean post-election hangover, if you will, right? I can admit to that. I it I it's, I struggled on Wednesday. 
we can we can all agree to that, right? So I'm, I'm scrolling down my timeline and I see Jess pop a beer like she's the matriarch or like she's at a frat party and she's the only girl allowed in the whole place. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, that's crazy. I can't wait to talk to her tomorrow at work. And then I look and I'm like, she's not even there. So I'm like, she has a hang up. So not only did she put herself out there letting people know that she was getting hammered, but she also let us know that she couldn't make it into work today either. <laughs> wait, I'm right here. I am right <laughs> here. And look You're what I have. In studio. Oh my gosh. What, what were you thinking, Jess? You're not 17 anymore. <laughs> I, I'm I'm well aware, and I realized when I tried to shotgun a lacrosse that it'd been a while. I will say, so D'Angelo, you've missed the whole. I'll give the shortest version of the story. I'm in a fantasy football league. The lowest scorer every week has to shotgun a beer on Tuesday morning. I asked if I could shotgun a beer on the show. It was like, no, probably not a great idea. But I could do something non-alcoholic, so I shotgun a lacrosse. I shotgunned a beer off the show, so I did two shotguns yesterday. It was a long day. A lot of liquid. The, the, the fact that you're wearing it like a badge of honor makes me sick to my stomach. <laughs> it, she didn't it, even... it really does. Like, that's one of those things. And, and I'm not a, I'm not a, I, I guess you can say that. I, I'm, I'm one of those gender guys, I guess, if you will, where Fact. it's okay if a guy do it. But if a woman does it, it's like, what the hell is Get out of here. Mm -hmm. No, like, I'm, I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I'm, it's okay if a guy do this, but you shotgun and a beer. Like I was like, but she was just, she was like, she go to my church. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not with hey, you, D'Angelo, on that one. Anything church. you can do, she can do better. That's hey, that's I, how I, it goes. I shotgun too. I, I never said she couldn't do it. I just said it looked better when a man does it. Versus when a woman do it, like shotgun and a beer, like she's just like, oh, it yeah, wasn't a beer. A beer. It, it was wasn't a, a beer. It was, was it some bougie, water. fancy, sparkling water. It was lacroix, and she got most of it on her sweater. Like yes. she didn't even yeah. drink it for real. Yeah. Okay. Well, okay. You, wait. Okay. No. 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 That right. is a that is a misconception, CJ. I do want to say I got a lot on my sweater. I drank a ton of it, and you guys, did. I went back and listened because I burped so loud. But you couldn't hear it. It didn't pick up. So that was a positive. But I did. <laughs> no, we heard it. We, we heard it. Jessica. Yeah, we heard it. And oh. there were, I, I'm, I'm with CJ. I think majority of it got on the sweater. I don't think you drank a lot of it. It was just like gushing out of the can. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> well, I normally I, I still, have like five lacrosse a day and I could not drink another one yesterday. <laughs> I, I can't believe you guys are still doing these house sorority house type game in your mid 20s. Yes. Let's, late, talk, about what, let's talk about what you do, D'Angelo. Let's talk about what you do, like travel across the world to win a million dollars or sit in your playroom because you are in trouble over what's better, strawberry or whatever, whatever it was. Now you're in your kitchen. I mean, the, your office moves. I, I, like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I am. I'm in my kitchen. And the reason why I'm in my kitchen is because I, I realize it's not what I say. It's like how I say it. Okay. So. So, so me and me and, my, and and you may understand this, Megan. You and CJ, but Jess may not understand this. Oh, so, <laughs> so, so, so my my wife is Filipino and Polish, and she can absolutely cook like a really good cook. And I told her, I said, look, on Thanksgiving when you cook, it is unbelievable. We get the Polish dishes, oh. we get the Filipino dishes, we get the soul food. Like she cook it all, and I'm like, it's good. But I told her, I said, we go to my family house and them old people get in the kitchen like they cook, cook. Mm -hmm. And she was like, so you said I can't cook? I was like, nah, honey, I'm not saying you can't cook. I'm just telling you, like, it's it's a diff it's different. It's different. And I can't I can't explain how I'm like, and she was like, but you said I can't cook. I'm like, no, I'm not saying you can't cook. I'm saying that when these old black people get in this mm -hmm. kitchen it's different from when you get in the kitchen. And, and, and I, she doesn't. She just assumed that I'm talking about that she can't cook, and I'm like, no, I'm. It, it's like, it's just soul food over here. That's what we specialize in. That's all you gonna get. We ain't getting no Filipino dish. We ain't getting no Polynesian. We ain't getting nothing outside of Polynesian. this soul food. 
Right, that's what I'm saying. Like, and, and ain't nobody bringing over sides and nothing like that. No, they're handling everything in the kitchen. I said, honey, it's different. It's just a little different. It, it is. She I can't, get. How can I say it to where you I'm can't. not saying that she can't? You can't say it at all. That's your wife. You can't say that. You can't say she can't cook, especially if she can't. Especially if she can cook, you can't say, "Well, they could cook, but you cook. It's still good." It don't. It never will come out right. It's one of those things I, you I just don't you. do. D, I got you. I, just I, say, I, yeah, I, I, I grew up eating this way, and this is what I'm accustomed to. Your food is great. It's different. It's a change of place, but this food takes me back to my roots and to my people, and it, it, it makes me feel good inside no as you look you're two guys we're two women you just don't say it it's not gonna come yeah, out right it's not gonna come out right just yeah. say both of y'all are great and when you want you can say it to your mom you can say it to your grandmother you can say it to your auntie you can say it to them the old school people say it to them but you can't say it to the wife so anyone that's listening do not listen to d'angelo and cj we are <laughs> no. not trying to have someone sleeping in the basement or sleeping in the playroom. No. you see d'angelo he's sitting in the kitchen right now and probably, did, yeah, did she cook breakfast for you this morning? You had no breakfast, right? She did. She oh, she did. did. She, she still cooked breakfast this morning. But, but she could cook. That's what I'm saying. She could cook. And I tell her all the time, I was like, Come on, honey, you can cook. Your food is great. It's just it's just something about. And, and I told her, I said, it could be somebody that's 30 or 40 years old, cook the same dish as somebody that's 60 or 70. But that 60 and 70 year old just bring a different mm. level it's, it's the experience. That's a veteran out Dang. there. But there, there, there's a difference. There's a difference, though. We don't like the old school people. And I'm, I'm shouting out my grandmothers, my mom. They don't measure. There's no like, oh, get a measuring cup. They, th there is no gluten free. No, oh, this yeah. is this is the, the the no salt butter. They don't do all that. And Dang. the greens come from the garden. The, the you know we're we're plucking things. That's how the old school way. It just tastes better too. It's where you get it from. And we're my grandmother will always say. Back in my day, we had cornbread and fried chicken or something fried every single day. And we lived to 90-something years old. Now, you want to say, I'm gluten-free. I have a gluten allergy. The food is different. <laughs> they, don't, they don't believe in that. <laughs> okay, I, I'm just making sure. So how can I – you you say, CJ, there is a way to say it. Megan, Yo. you're saying there's not a way to say it. Like, mm -mm. so I – CJ. Yeah. CJ is wrong. D'Angelo, as someone who can't cook, I would like to say, I, I do not cook. Chris, is, my fiance, Chris, his dad worked in the restaurant industry. Great cook. Chris is a great cook. On the rare occasion that I make something, like let's say I make a grilled cheese and some canned chicken noodle soup, he best say that that is the best grilled cheese and canned chicken noodle soup that he's ever had because that will warm my heart and I will try to do it again. If he says, hey, Jess, this grilled cheese is burnt, which it probably is, I won't mm -hmm. ever do it again. And then, and then you're just your feelings are hurt. So if your wife actually can cook, you better shout her out, and you better yeah. appreciate every single thing yeah. she does. And just you just keep it on the inside. Keep it right. on the inside. And yeah. you ask her for the yeah. Polish food. You ask you ask your aunties and all them and all them. You know, yeah. say all them. You ask them for the fried chicken, the greens, the cornbread, the macaroni and cheese. But you just don't ask your wife for. They be like, oh, it's good. But if she makes it for you, you don't ever ask for it because it's the one thing I do sure. know. No wife wants her in-laws or her other side of the family to think that she can't cook the way that you like. It's a great feeling when you go home like, oh, yeah, my wife makes me happy. Like, I got some meat on the bone. It's all good. No one wants to think that, like, oh, you know, he can't get that fried chicken over there. Mm -mm. That's not a good sign. No, so, so no, no, that's that's not what I'm saying. And this is how I compare. This is what I compare my wife to. You'll get to understand it. But, yes, I want to let you know, all that shit go out the window. And I said it just like that when you get married. So when he put that ring on your finger, like him saying, like, oh, that was the best I ever ate. Like, no, 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 no. I'm talking about after you say I do. I do. That's when he's going to be like, you know what? I ain't got to laugh at your jokes. It's not funny anymore. I don't have to. Like, all that stuff just go out. The, I know because my wife do it to me. And I'm like, dude, you, like, this suck. And she was like, well, I mean, what do you want me to do? Like, your jokes have been funny in, like, 20 years. Whoa. And I'm like, what the? I'm like, she was like, but I laugh at him because I know that it makes you feel good. But anyway, so this is what I compared her to. I was like, my wife, my wife is like that general doctor. Like he sees everything like mm -hmm. and he's good at what he does. But then, when you you know, when you go to those specialists like they're not I'm not saying that those specialists like, you know, what I'm saying are better than that general doctor. I'm just saying they specialize. Yeah. So that's what I mean by her being a cook versus like, hey, you know, I got this knee issue and you know what it is. You don't go to a general doctor. You go to a knee specialist. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying. But you know what? You know, the, the, I love that analogy and that comparison. But the difference is when you go to a general doctor 
as, as, as he or she is telling you, look, okay, okay, let's check this. The test results came back this. I, he says, or she says, it's time to go to a specialist. You don't bring it up. They're like, you know what? All right, you know, Dr. Jones, I think I need to, I think I need to leave and go to, you know, a specialist. The doctor <laughs> has to say it. You can't say it. You see what I'm saying? So if, you, if you're asking for something, let her say, hey, you know what? You need to go ahead and go over to the cousin da -da -da May May's house and go ahead and ask for that. That's not my thing. Does that make sense with your, with your I, analogy? I, 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 that's what I'm saying. I get what you're saying now. And, and that was on me. That was on me. I, I'm going to clean the that child up. just fly well, through the... Yeah, we, we, we just see your kid. <laughs> your kid okay? <laughs> she, did. she did, but this is what's funny, though. Like, I'm laughing at Jess inside, and I'm going to laugh really hard when we get off, because I didn't know you were that bad. Like, I mean, some oh, yeah. people, like, you don't even have a baseline. You just was like, <laughs> like what said, happened? Well, she said can soup. It, didn't, it did <laughs> not help that Chris is such a good cook. So, like, of course he's going to cook for us. Why Why would you have the, the inferior person cook your dinners when you have, like, an actual chef who's really good at everything? So that made me even worse. I used to be, like, the queen of the George Foreman, just throw some chicken on there, call it good. Now Megan has introduced me to the air fryer. That's made my life easier. But, yeah, no. I can bake, but I can't cook. I learned to bake from my Nana. So I can do that, but I, I'm just not, not a D chef. D'Angelo, what I want to know is Amazing Grace... Do y'all have to cook have something to one day? Y'all, y'all had y'all had to make a drink. That was last week. Have y'all had to? Can you tease us something? Will you, we get to see you having to cook something? We've seen you make make some instruments. We've seen you make a drink. What? 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 So, so here's here's the thing. I I I can follow directions. I can measure stuff out. I can do. But I, is that truly cooking? If I can follow a recipe, uh, is the question. Because if if that's the case, we can all do that. But now this is where it differs for with Jeff. Like, I don't even, do you even know what a recipe book look like, Jeff? Yes. Oh, my gosh. So I, have, I can follow a recipe, too. I'm just not an intuitive cooker. I also just don't like to cook. I have, but you I'll like go get eat. my recipe book right now. What do you want, yeah, what do you want to make? See, that, that's the thing. That's what's throwing me off because I, you talk about eating so much. I just assume, like, yo, she be cooking her butt off. And then to find out that you can't cook. I mean, her, D'Angelo, you, you, you have to follow. She has a second Instagram account called Date Night in Memphis yeah. where they go out to eat. They literally go out to eat like two or three times a week. So when she's talking about food, oh. she eats out a lot, which is not a bad thing. But she is partaking yeah. in all the local places. Well, okay. So, so, here's, so how we, here's how we eat, D'Angelo. I'll, I'll break it down. So Chris is off on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So that's our weekend. So we eat out on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And then the other five days of the week, we eat the same thing every week. We're very boring but he cooks it very well so we alternate between like chicken turkey burgers salmon some kind of fish and then maybe some kind of like a chicken sausage or something with like vegetable stir fry every night so that's what we eat all the time what what huh and then we have two days where we can eat whatever we want and it's great but when i when i when i look at all the cool stuff that you do and to find out that you eat like this like this is <laughs> I, I'm so confused right now. Like, I am so... See, did you notice, CJ? Did you know that... I figure, I, I assume, D'Angelo, when you come from money, you know, <laughs> butlers and maids, they, they, she has her own chefs. You know what I'm talking about at the beach house. No, the problem is my mom isn't a cook either. That's what I didn't, I didn't learn from my mom. That's not a problem. Like, I don't, I don't fault her for that. We just didn't have, like, very large home cooked meals. Now, my my nana was like a fantastic cook. I could have learned a lot more from her, and I learned how to bake from her. But I just never really transitioned into the cooking side of things. My so, wife doesn't so cook I, either, Angela. Really? Yeah, she doesn't. Oh, cook. Yes. She, doesn't she doesn't want to. Like she's you held she on can, to that she too long, want CJ. To. Oh, but just oh, you, know, you, you told me I was wrong, JB. You you had to sit here for all these jokes. <laughs> Uh, so, so here's this is what I this is what I have, and and maybe this this is a like a uh, this is bad thinking because back in the days, like because my grandmother, my grandfather, I spent a lot of time with them. Like that's what they always did was they always drug the granddaughter or mm -hmm. the niece or whoever because it was like their thing was is the woman needs to know a way around the kitchen, you know, and not necessarily us. Obviously, I don't know how to cook because my dad and them. You know, they subscribe to those ways. So us coming in the kitchen, other than to eat or get something to drink, you better get your butt out of the kitchen. 
So when it's when it's women in this day and age say, "Yo, I can't cook." Like I'm just like, "Wait, what?" Like cuz even with my wife, she dragged the girls in here and they stand over the stove and they cook and they like it. Oh, and my see. son come in here. Right, yeah, and my <laughs> son come in here, me and him and we just like, "Yo, like this stuff's boring." And they're like, they're having the time of their life. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe, you know, it's from birth or something like that. But it's like, I've never, it's weird hearing women say, yeah, I hate to cook. Like, what? See, I always wanted to hang out with, my grandpa was always watching football, and it always felt way cooler because he just got to sit and drink a beer and watch football. So I always wanted to sit and watch the game with him. That was more of, like, my grandparent desire. Now, like, I, I would, like, I remember helping mashed potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the easiest thing. Like, with my grandma, <laughs> or we'd make like breakfast. She was a great breakfast maker: bacon, eggs, biscuits, gravy. Um, but yeah, that's the extent of it. Mm-hmm. What? What? what does, does it? Does the strong, independent woman? Does that not come with being able to cook too? Or no. Is that just oh, not I, I would love that. No, it does not. This has no. It does to do not. I that. like cooking, but it does not. Oh, strong, independent okay. woman I, is not. A strong, independent not. woman comes with my man better get up and help. That's what strong independent women comes and with, I and you better wash dishes. dishes. That's you, my yeah, job. You gotta find like to a happy medium. Dishes. I come, Daniel. I'm with you. Okay. I come from a very old school family as well. I luckily have we have a lot of women in my family, so there was never enough room for all of us to be in the kitchen. So I was one that was in and out because my attention span would be the worst. But I'm also I've learned from seeing things that I would like my man to help out. My dad cooks. He cook. He'll cook. He he cooks breakfast. He likes to experiment with things. But I also would love it for a man to kind of help wash dishes a little bit, you know, for the holidays. I, I don't I would like to change those traditions that we have in our family. Um, being uh, one of five women in a house, it's not fun. It's just not fun. However, I don't want to change the, the tradition of taking the trash out. I like that part of the man. I do. I do. I will say that. Yeah. That's the one tradition I do not want to change because that's the Thank best you. thing about holidays is now I have two brother-in-laws. It's like trash. Oh, trash needs to be taken out. Megan, you can't have I it both ways. I know. I'm selfish. I'm okay with that, though. I'm selfish. I have to take the trash out all the time. Chris makes oh. me like that's like part oh, of the bargain. Don't cook. He cleans mm. the toilets, though. He always cleans the toilets. <laughs> I don't. I don't touch the toilets. Um, but I do take the trash out, and I do the dishes every night. So who yeah. does the grocery shopping in your house, Jess? No, oh, you've already heard this story. Yeah. We've already we, heard the story, split. and they split the they split the groceries yeah, down right. the middle. That's right. That's right. That's right. I, 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 I will No, we right. don't. Wait, <laughs> hey, Daniel, so we're running. Out, we've talked sure. about food and everything else, but we haven't talked about anything. I want to ask you because I know as you're confused okay. about what's going on with the cooking and the women and the men, what the jobs are. Were you confused about your Steelers on Sunday when it got very very close against the Cowboys? I was I was very confused because the Cowboys are trash and you know how I hate <laughs> the Cowboys and their fan base. So I was really looking for this to happen. But this is what's interesting now. You remember we had this conversation about Cam Newton tested positive for COVID mm-hmm. and that they should have postponed the game, but they still end up playing that significant game. Well, now the Steelers have Ben Roethlisberger and half the damn offense right now in quarantine. It's going to be very interesting to see if they are allowed to play those guys come this Sunday when they have to play a very significant game with an undefeated team. If they show anything different than what they showed the New England Patriots, then it's okay for us to be upset, right? Mm-hmm. But I will say that in this case, Ben did not test positive himself. Yeah. It's because of We don't know what he like. tested. It. They didn't say he tested negative either. They just said he tested sure. positive. That's they didn't, well, they, no, they didn't. They didn't. They didn't it's say true. tested positive or negative. They just did, they didn't. They didn't even address that. They just said, "Hey, with contact tracing, you know, we mm-hmm. decided to put them." They ain't gonna tell you what he tested because if he tested positive, they know that all of Pittsburgh are gonna lose their mind and they're gonna have to either <laughs> postpone this game or deal with these very upset fans on a potentially undefeated season. So that's what I think is gonna be interesting. So you don't believe in the possibility of Mason Rudolph coming in? He had to step in there when Ben Roethlisberger had that that knee injury in that game. You don't believe in him? If Ben if Ben's out, are you a little nervous? I'm gonna tell you right now. I don't believe in Mason Rudolph filling in as a guest pastor at a church, uh, and all he got to do is say a couple words and read from a book. I'm just telling you how much I don't believe in him. Okay, so that's a no. That, that, that's that a, sums it up. That is a no. Yes. 
<laughs> D'Angelo, another team that looked like they were going to struggle against a not as great team, your Memphis Tigers over the weekend, almost almost lost to South Florida, but they pulled it out. I think they had like a 1.4% chance of winning that game when there were three minutes left, but they do get the win. Yeah, I they, they find a new ways to scare me, and you guys see it. Every time my Tigers lose, I get harassed, and I at this point in time, I'm pretty sure it's cyberbullying, and I'm going to report him the next time he says something. <laughs> but as long as we keep winning, I don't have any issues. I don't care if we win by a point or if we win by – I don't care if we cover the spread. I just care if we win. You have fans out there upset because somebody that don't play football told them that they should win by 17 points. Think about that. There's somebody that's never played football – that put in a, a algorithm in the computer. Granted, they're very close and always right most of the time, but still, <laughs> they put in this algorithm and they say this is what the team. So then they go out and they place their bets, and then they place these bets. Don't make the seventeen point spread. Our Tiger fans are upset that we didn't beat them by more, but yet we beat them. Like a win is a win, no matter how you get them. We just need to stack enough to get us what we need to get to, and that's to uh, a bowl victory or to a bowl and then the bowl victory, and then we can rebuild from there. And somewhere that we get to see you get to somewhere is tonight on Amazing Race. You guys are heading to the City of Lights, Paris, France. What can we expect yeah. from tonight's episode? You're not going to tell us if you made it or not, but just some, give us something that we can expect from tonight's episode. Well, I, I can tell you this. This episode is the reason why I cut my hair. Oh, all I'm saying. <laughs> that's a lot. This episode is the reason why I cut my hair. Oh, okay. Oh, I got to well, wait till seven o'clock tonight. Darn it. <laughs> yeah. Do you speak? <laughs> this episode, do you speak any French, D'Angelo? I I speak none, and oui. even knowing we oui as like I I no, I don't speak any French at all. But I can tell you this though, in all the places that we've been up to, including France, at this very moment. I got a croissant in France, and it was not you. It wasn't Utopia, and it wasn't a fork like I thought it was going to be. Oh. I had better croissant in other countries. Really, that's surprising. Yeah. Wow. No, it it wasn't dis, It wasn't surprising. It was disappointing <laughs> because I'm just like that's all you. That's all you think about. Not necessarily. That's not what they're known for. But you're just like, man, mm -hmm. the crepes and the pastries here have to be better than any other place. And no. Uh uh, it's either the, it's 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 because you get used to or accustomed to other places, and then you go to that country and they put an ingredient in there that normally is not in there. You just like that makes no it's stupid. Why would you put this? But it but not knowing that you ate an American Americanized uh, crepe or pastry versus you know eating it out of the country. So yeah, it was completely different. Did you try escargot? If you didn't like the croissant, did you try snails? I, I, I've eaten snail here uh, in the States. I didn't try the snail there because I was so disappointed that the pastries wasn't up to par. I was so wow. mad. And they put chocolate in everything. Everything. I forgot and you don't like, like chocolate like that. Oh, man. It was, oh, uh, it was, man, again, it was like just in the kitchen. That was just, just didn't make sense. <laughs> all right well it just doesn't make sense that we're it doesn't make sense that we have to say goodbye to you but we'll get to talk to you tomorrow with gary we'll re we'll recap the whole entire episode and i promise we'll talk about amazing race and not food we will not talk about jessica lack ability of cooking thank you thank you <laughs> lack ability is quite I, I, the word i i can say this i i can say this and and, and i can't say this about a lot of shows but you guys are made for each other. You, <laughs> Megan, CJ, y'all are made for each other because this, you are different. Megan, you, you are the, you are a poster child for different. And <laughs> CJ, you. you just hanging in there, big dog. CJ, you the only normal person on the show. You're damn right, D'Angelo. Oh. And D'Angelo, you, you do know you're part of the family too, and you are not yeah, normal, sweetheart. There is nothing, not one <laughs> drop of normal about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you in your place. <laughs> D'Angelo, we'll talk to you tomorrow. We gotta go. We have a guest coming joining us, but we'll get, we'll talk okay, to you tomorrow. Okay, All right. okay, I'm gonna go work on my cooking skills. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. All right, coming up after the break, we'll get you to CJ's corner. We'll tell you the latest from around the sports world. We'll be right back.
you've been told that you snore loudly, making choking noises, or gasp for air while sleeping? If so, you may have obstructive sleep apnea. One in four adults in the United States has obstructive sleep apnea. If left untreated, it can cause morning headaches, daytime sleepiness, high blood pressure, heart attack, stroke, or diabetes. Call Mid-South Pulmonary and Sleep Specialist PC, the official pulmonary and sleep practice of the Memphis Grizzlies at 901-276-6507. In a time when preventative care is more important than ever, routine oral and eye checkups could save your life. That's why Delta Dental of Tennessee offers dental and vision plans starting at less than a dollar a day. Our large network of dentists can detect 120 signs and symptoms of diseases before they're life-threatening. Keep your health care costs low and your health at an all-time high with the power of preventive dental and vision plans from Delta Dental of Tennessee. Choose your health first. Choose Delta Dental. Toyota Thon is on. Now get $1,000 customer cash on a legendary new 2021 4Runner or $1,250 on the number one selling Tacoma. Get $1,750 on the powerful built in the USA Tundra or get $2,000 customer cash off your best deal on the last of the new 2020 Highlanders or best in class Highlander hybrids. Customer cash excludes TRD Pro. Offers end November 30th. For complete details, go to buyatoyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Hey everybody, what's going on? It's a Wednesday edition of The Corner. Let's get you caught up on some sports stories you may have missed. The preseason top 25 for NCAA women's basketball came out yesterday. South Carolina sits in the top spot, followed by Stanford, UConn, Baylor, Louisville, Mississippi State, Arizona, North Carolina State, UCLA, and Oregon rounds out the top 10. Other teams of note include Kentucky in at number 11, Texas A&M in at number 13, Arkansas at 14, and Missouri State gets in there at number 24. Men's and women's basketball will look a bit different in the Mountain West Conference this year. Teams will play a 20-game schedule over 11 weeks with teams playing each other in two-game series with a one-day break in between games. So programs will have five home series and five road series, allowing regular travel to be reduced by a month to try and help mitigate the exposure to the coronavirus. The 11 week format does allow adjustments to be made throughout the season in case of COVID-19 outbreaks. Speaking of COVID-19, there may be a more regionalized realignment, short term hubs and a reduced schedule happening in the NHL for this upcoming season due to COVID-19 restrictions. This according to Commissioner Gary Bettman, who cited the restrictions across the Canadian border and issues with quarantining as you go state to state. A meeting is scheduled this Thursday with the NHL Board of Governors to discuss this and other topics regarding the NHL season. I want to take this time to say a special thank you to my daddy, my Uncle Jim, and all the servicemen and women out there on this Veterans Day. Thank all of you for the sacrifices you have made and continue to make on behalf of this nation. We would not be here without you. Hey, Pop is next. Acadian Ambulance is proud to be an official partner of the Memphis Grizzlies and FedEx Forum, serving the greater Memphis area with exceptional emergency and non-emergency pre-hospital care. Acadian is looking for more Grizzlies fans to join our growing team of EMTs and paramedics with opportunities in Memphis and other markets. Employee-owned, nationally recognized Acadian Ambulance Service. Learn more at memphisemsjobs.com. Need some barbecue nachos, brisket, ribs, maybe a cheese and sausage plate? The Rendezvous is now open for curbside and carryout. They also deliver through a few of the popular delivery apps. While not much changes in that alley basement, you will see a few small differences and additions. They are open from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Tuesday through Saturday and... For the first time ever, they have dessert, key lime pie tart, chocolate chest pie tarts, and so much more. Spend some time downtown and visit our friends at The Rendezvous, a family-owned restaurant in downtown Memphis Alley since 1948. I love the haircut. Thank they you. tell me you've been getting beat up over it, Zach. I ain't the say, I look, I, ain't say I look like I'm 25. <laughs> I was in uh, somebody said, uh, uh, I was in Vegas. They said, is that Zion? <laughs> <laughs> I said, I paid away from little brother. I said, that's my little brother. Tune in to GrindCityMedia.com, Grind City Media on YouTube, or on the official Grizzlies mobile app 
to catch Chris live or download each episode daily and subscribe at iTunes, Spotify, or SoundCloud today. What's up, Grizzlies fans? I'm Megan Triplett, and I have some exciting news to share. We have a new app. That's right. It's a three-in-one experience that you don't want to miss out on. Check this out. The app will keep you up to date on all of the Grizzlies stats and latest news. If you're looking to see what events are going on at FedEx Forum, that can all be found on the app as well. Plus, if you want to see more of me and the rest of the Grind City Media team, like Chris Vernon, Lang Whitaker, and Mike Wallace, there's a section for all that. It is 365 days of content to keep you in touch with all things Grizzlies, FedEx Forum, and GCM. And did I mention you can also purchase and manage tickets on the app? The app does it all. Download it now. And we welcome you back to Rise and Grind. We have a special guest joining Justin and I for today's segment. And it is, it is Carnival High School kicker Hudson Hollenbeck. Hudson, you are doing some amazing and some special things. And you have a campaign right now called Kicks for Cancer. Can you first just tell us why Kicks for Cancer is super, super important to you and your family? Yeah, so basically what we're doing is we're um, raising money for lung cancer research, basically because lung cancer hit my family and my mom, and uh, we're not exactly sure how that happened. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to raise money to spread research for that. And Hudson, that is so, 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 so amazing. And, and this weekend you have a big game against Arlington where you are still raising money for your kicks. And first tell us how they can have, how people can be a part of that. Okay. Um, so there is a website called links, uh, links for lungs, Memphis.org. And, um, you can pledge money on that website to donate for, um, this game and uh, the upcoming games for the season. And uh, that's how we're going to get this one. I think we're having like some audio issues. Oh, there she goes. Oh. There she is. Can you hear me? Yes, we now we can. Okay, perfect. There we are. Hey, how are you doing, Hudson? And your lovely mother, Gina, who's there with you this morning. Like you mentioned, this is something that really cuts close to your family. Your mom was diagnosed with stage four lung cancer, a non-smoker. Just what do you hope people continue to learn about lung cancer and, and as you kind of continue to raise awareness through kicking here through the rest of the playoffs? Can you repeat that? I didn't hear you too well. I'm sorry. Just what does it mean to be sitting there next to your mom and to know that you can you can kick for her and for other people who are affected by lung cancer? Um, it means the world, you know, just uh, the fact that she's still here after all that she's been through. It's um, it's great. Um, just, you know, knowing that I'm doing something other than for myself, you know, because, um, I mean, as a kicker, um, there's always a point of, um, you know, um, all the fame and whatever for a kicker. But, you know, just something else for my mom, just because, you know, um, when, when you think of cancer, you commonly think of, you know, like breast cancer and lung cancer usually isn't, you know, the most thought of thing and I just think it's I think it's pretty cool that I can do this for uh, you know um, another cause and um, just spread some awareness for that kind of stuff and Gina I see you smiling right sitting right next to him and hearing your son who is a junior just speak so eloquently and also just doing some big and amazing things not just for yourself and lung cancer but for, for others how does that make you feel oh I'm so incredibly um, proud of Hudson when I was diagnosed, um, our whole family took on cancer, and um, Hudson wanted to find a way that he could use his skills and his abilities to um, help other people. And lung cancer is a disease that is highly stigmatized, so there's not a lot of funding for it. A lot of people believe that it's a disease caused by smoking, and um, I didn't have any risk factors 
So, um, you know, we're trying to figure out, like, why, why did I get this and how can we treat it? And so I'm so proud of him that he's raising um, so much money uh, for lung cancer research for new treatments for people just like me. That's awesome. And you guys have done so much to continue to raise awareness, both with the golf event that you guys put on, Links for Lungs, and you have this now in Hudson. I know this is a big week for you as Collierville faces Arlington in the second round of the playoffs. You've already had a game-winning kick once this year but you're you're a legit kicker kicker like you are a five-star punter you're four and a half star kicker how much pride do you take in being that position on this team um you know i i like to say that i take pride in it but of course i'm just very blessed to be able to do what i love um but yeah i mean i'm just i'm trying to be the best version of myself as i can be um and of course use that to um the highest of my abilities for stuff like this i think that's i think that's what um yeah, that's good. Hudson, my man, I guess nobody else is going to ask it, so I'll be the one to do so. How long you been growing the mullet, dog? What's that? <laughs> How long you been growing the mullet? Is that a mullet? What are we calling that right there? Yeah. Um, well, it's actually kind of a weird story. Um, I got it last year around the same time, um, and I did it for football just because a lot of my football bros are uh, you know, doing the same thing. Um, then I actually cut it off during quarantine. She actually cut it off for me because I was getting oh. sick of it. Um, <laughs> uh, she did. A, she did a good job actually, and it looked pretty good. Um, but With kitchen shears. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I decided to uh, get it back this year for football again. It's kind of just a football. Can game. we see I mean, it from the back? Can we see the back? Because it looks real nice, man. Oh, <laughs> that's a head full of hair. <laughs> If that much grew back that fast, you grow hair quickly. Oh, yeah. Uh, Hudson, really quickly, for those who definitely want to be a part of Kicks for Cancer and for what you're doing, can you tell us the link? And do you have a goal and how much money do you want to raise? Or is it just like, you know what, I want to continue this fight and also want to continue to give as, as long as you have the, the chance to? Okay, um, so the link is linksforlongsmemphis.org, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And... Um, Freshman year, I did it, and we raised eight thousand oh, wow. um, dollars. That's that's a lot of money, but um, of course, we're always going to try to top that. Um, so, I mean, that'd be my goal is to maybe try to pass that. Nice. That is that's that awesome. is a lot of money. Yeah, that's awesome, and we hope that you're able to achieve all that and more. What's the longest kick you've hit in a game? In a game, right now, it's forty-two yards. Okay. We'll see if we can uh, get you even further out because obviously it even means a little bit more to you and anyone and everyone who's been affected by lung cancer. Hudson, we're so appreciative of you joining us this morning. We wish you the best of luck. And like Megan said, you're just a junior, yeah. so we can't wait to see where uh, this takes you next year, and we'll have to catch up next year and see where you're at in your recruiting process. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much. Have a good thank one. Thank you. <laughs> and keep, keep growing the hair. Yes. yes. <laughs> so everyone please make sure you go check out that link that Hudson just said that's really really amazing for what he is doing and we've we've had a couple of you know like seeing like in in the area some high school players put on something like this where you're doing things for a good cause and they're so young and it's so amazing to hear them talk about it and speak about it and for Hudson's story that he's doing this for his mom and his family now seeing that like how much is affected his family he's like I want to raise money for others and also raise awareness that's also amazing yeah, I just think kids stepping up to do anything extra, especially in a year like this, that's already been so hard for everyone to still have mm -hmm. that kind of focus to want to do even more. Love to see it. Yeah. All right. It's time to get to our pop of the morning. And it is Wednesday, so we got to recap it all from The Bachelorette last Yay! night. It was Tasha's Adams' first episode of being the full-on Bachelorette. It all started with her meeting her 16 men that were left from Claire's season. She walked in. The guys' faces dropped. Their eyes got so wide of seeing how beautiful she was. And then we had a whole breaking moment when Chris Harrison comes in. It's like, hey, these aren't the only guys. They bring in four other new guys to the group. The, the old guys did not like that very much. And one of the new guys, Spencer, got the first impression rose. And now here we are starting this process all over again and I must say Jessica I said that I wasn't sure if I was going to watch it but I'm all in I'm all in yet again here we go she's she seems to be doing really really great so far yeah she does and most importantly like she's normal we have a normal bachelorette 
Okay, the show. No, no. CJ, listen to this. She's not normal because I will say this. The one part I almost literally like choked on was when I don't know who asked her. Oh, oh, it was the guy, the lawyer. Oh, what do you do for a living? I um I travel um uh for personally okay. and professionally, and I'm in like the beauty lifestyle. And she and he asked her, Oh, so what do you do? I'm a defense lawyer um for malpractice. <laughs> And obviously, I know she's been on The Bachelor. She's been on Bachelor in Paradise. She is the typical Bachelor Instagram influencer. She travels. Um, she used to ha she used to be a lobotomist, where she you know she was she studied blood. So I don't know why now. Which I get it. If you make more money being an Instagram person, you do. We all yeah. know this, like the Instagram influencer game. But when she said it, it was so awkward. Like I um travel. You wait, hold living, on. Lobotomist or lobotomist? Lobotomist. Lobotomist. The blood. What's the blood? Lobotomist. Flubotomy okay. Flub is Flub like when you brain. like take brains. Oh out. no, flubotomous. Okay. <laughs> I don't. Yes. Even, I don't. Okay. I don't study blood. So, but like you said, <laughs> typical Instagram lifestyle bachelorette. All I could think was watching the show yesterday. I was like, oh, what a breath of just relief. The show went as shows do. She has these new guys come. She has the sixteen guys mm -hmm. left over. Shockingly, she is interested in getting to know each and every one of them. What a foreign concept after we saw the Claire Dale debacle of the last couple of weeks. And even after she gave her first impression rose to Spencer, um, she decides to cancel the rose ceremony, get to know everyone even better. I appreciated that. We will continue to talk about Tasia, but at that point in the show, I was just like, why are Claire and Dale coming I back know. onto my screen? I did not need that. That could have been like a little amendum at the end of the episode, but instead they just popped it in. And it was an interview that they apparently did back in the summer when they were there. So, mm -hmm. of course, they're still engaged at that point, and we know they're still engaged. I've learned more about them on their IG lives than I did in that interview with Chris Harrison. But they did address the question that we continue to ask and will continue to ask. Did they talk before the show? They swear up and down. Claire swears on her father's grave, but they did not. So I'm just going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And say, mm. great, love at first sight. Congratulations, yeah. you two. Dale I'm said he didn't board. have her number. <laughs> I don't think he had the walk. number. I don't think he had the number, but she said it. She said it. She, this girl, she just stalked him, stalked his Instagram page. And she's like a normal person where you stalk a guy's Instagram page. That was the guy that she wanted from the get go. When that list came out and she saw them, let's just be real, that was the guy that she fell in love with. And she, you know, kind of, it might be a little crazy a little bit but she fell in love by looking at captions and looking at abs and looking at the smile and saying oh and then she met him that was it i do the part of that claire and dale interview they did when they at when um chris harrison asked so what's next are you guys going to move in together he started to answer the question He's like well and she interrupted so quick kids and chris harrison said okay so well, bad. are you guys going to get married first and then kids and she's like we'll just wait and see and he couldn't get one word in which also told you a little bit more about the relationship and she was just like, we'll just wait and see. You know, kids is, 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 is in our future. And Dale just sat there. He couldn't talk. He couldn't say a thing. So, so awkward. That was an awkward it was, part. It was. Yeah. That was wildly uncomfortable. But shout out to Dale and Claire in South Dakota meeting his family mm -hmm. for the first time. You can follow it all on Instagram. And you can be grateful that I would hope at this point until we get to the after the final rose or way later in the show. Um, we won't have to see them for a hot second. We can focus yeah. on Tasia and her fun-filled bachelorette experience of actually trying to find love. Um, it was refreshing. We had like some guy drama mm -hmm. on their little date where they played splash ball, which is really just basketball in the pool because what else can you do at La Quinta? And tiny, tiny um, Speedos, too. Tiny, Damn tiny right. Speedos. Small Speedos. <laughs> Y'all gonna see these thighs. some bows. You had Spencer and Riley like getting mm -hmm. into it and Riley called Spencer lunch meat specifically fried bologna, which I've never heard anyone be called fried bologna, but I personally now never want to be called fried bologna. That was quite well, you're the big. That's not good. Fried that's bologna is good. delicious, though. Like, no. that's a yes, compliment to me. No, there's, there's never better sandwiches you want to be good. called than fried bologna. That is that is the cheapest thing that you can ever make. So it's, you don't want to be called that. You just don't want to be called that. I will say the guy that got the 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 one on one date, the turtleneck guy. I have no idea where he came from. If he he was a part of Claire's season, and I'm like, this boy just came out of nowhere and came like with the turtleneck and and became the guy that Tasha that Tasha really really likes. I'm like, who is this guy? Like I have not seen him. I don't trust him for some reason either. He's giving me this non trusting vibe. Um, 
him and Zach giving that non-trusting vibe. So I, I interested to see. We did see a guy leave already. Jason did leave, the former football player. He did leave. He said that he had was falling in love with Claire after one date. Um, he did leave. I did, I did love that when he went to Tasha to, to her room or to her little mini house or whatever, he said, just so you know, they're, all the other guys, they're here for you. They do not feel the same way about you know about me that I do for, for Claire. I had so much respect for him there because you know as a as a as a woman, you're going into it like, do they really like me? Do they yeah. are they interested more in Claire? Are they just really here now because the cameras are here? But he did say he was like, trust me, and it made me kind of like Jason. You 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 don't love Claire like you have one date. Stay, get to know Tasha. It'll work out. But he was a bigger person, so he did leave. That's what I, I was like, dude, stay. You knew Claire for two weeks. It's not like you guys were in a long-term relationship. Yeah. All of these guys, like the 16 guys who stayed were kind of like peeved at the four new guys. And especially when Spencer got the first impression rose. And I was like, dudes, chill. Like y'all have never met Tasia. You're all in the yeah. exact same boat. You've been at the La Quinta for two weeks maximum. Just enjoy, enjoy the experience you thought you were going to get. Becoming mm -hmm. an Instagram celebrity, maybe finding a little love along the way. Um, but turtleneck, dude, yeah, I, I need name captions to come back up for a long period time, of time. I don't, yeah, but I don't know any of them. I have to ask if you're Claire and you're watching this back, I would be a little jealous. You might have your Neil Lane diamond ring, but the guys are more excited to talk to yeah. Tasha. We knew Claire coming in; she was a little upset about the guys not being aggressive and like wanting to talk to her. And you know, Dale was the only one. But the guys are aggressive with Tasha. When Tasha walked in that room, it was, "Oh, can I talk to you? Can I talk to you?" And I'm like, if I'm Claire, I'm like, oh, I mean, you obviously made the right choice. Dale, Dale was your person, but the guys seem a lot more interested interested in Tasha, which, which tells you maybe Claire really wasn't great behind the scenes either you know it just it i don't think she it resonated well she didn't fake it well at all no they're so thirsty for communication about mm -hmm. anything other than claire and even like looking back on it anytime claire had a conversation it was about claire like i didn't know anything about any of these guys and they yeah. all have actual personalities and jobs and things to get to know like even brendan like he was so nervous to tell her that he had been divorced before and to have them have that shared experience. Like, wow, I learned something. I actually remember a fact about someone other than mm -hmm. Dale on this show. It's it's very interesting, but I appreciate it. I worry it might get a little stale. Um, they're no, out there writing. That preview looks good, though. The, the preview looks <sighs> as if there's going to be a lot of tears cried. And I hate to say it, but we love tears. We but they're do. out there riding ponies around the pool. Like <laughs> In terms of dates. They were playing cornhole. Like, it's all very normal. Mm -hmm. um, I, I do it. I'm looking forward to seeing how they continue to figure out ways to do dates in the exact same place over and over again. And, like, Chris Harrison popping up and serving margaritas is something on a date. Yeah. Um, but I am excited for this new, this new wave, and mm -hmm. I will continue to watch. Well, something else to get excited about. We also learned yesterday the premiere date of Matt James's season. He is the first black bachelor in bachelor history. That season will premiere on January 4th. It's the day before my birthday. So I'm kind of excited. I'm also kind of like mad. I'm like, oh, of course you want to come the day before my birthday when you didn't even call me to join. I mean, obviously it's not for me, but you could have given me a phone call, but I am excited to see that. And we also know the date of January 4th, which also tells us that Tasha season will be over before then and i'm guessing it's probably going to be over before christmas as well so we don't have to wait a lot of weeks for Tasha's season to end yeah that's actually crazy too to think how quickly they're going to wrap this up and since no one went home last night that takes another day out of the equation of mm -hmm. people going home so if there's going to be multiple rose ceremonies and episodes however they end up doing that will be interesting to keep an eye on Yes, it will. When uh, We also learned yesterday, thanks to the Lady Girl Gang podcast, that Tristan Sutter, who was the first Bachelorette, she came out and said that during her wedding, which her wedding premiered on ABC, she and her friends found a Bachelor binder and shocking the Bachelor and Bachelorette might be a little fake. They might kind of fake their storyline. She said that certain friends at her bachelor Bachelorette party had different things next to their name, like villain or different things and so not surprising news but i do find it interesting that she brings that out especially right now during this controversial season and dramatic season that this is the first time ever but we did learn that that we didn't know that the bachelor might be a little fake and they might kind of push some storylines it's tv <laughs> it it's reality oh. tv 
I will say though, the thing that stuck out, I would be, I would be so willing to have a made up bachelorette party if it meant that the bachelor would take care of my wedding costs, we could mm-hmm. get married at a nice resort because that's what she said. She was like, they saved a ton of money. They never would have been able to get married where they ended up getting married. Like that, I get that the sacrifices of your privacy and like configuring dramatic storylines probably isn't the most fun thing to deal with, but whew, free wedding. I'm in. Yeah. <laughs> you are it. Let's get to I'm some. In. Let's get to some other pop culture news around the. And let's talk about Johnny Depp. So Johnny Depp was for was kind of forced out. Was forced to resign from Fantastic's Beast. Um, but however, he is going to still receive his six. I think seven figure salary. Eight. Eight, eight, eight figure. I thought it was seven. Eight figure salary from it. And this all comes after the whole Johnny Depp. He's been in a legal battle with his ex-wife, Amber Heard. He lost that legal battle with, um, he was trying to sue her back for saying that, you know, defamation, calling him a wife beater. He does have pictures and there's been, that's been like a, for years that's been going on right now. He did lose that lawsuit. And so now he's being forced to resign. Some people say that this is, you know, Johnny Depp, like he, no more Hollywood Johnny Depp, because this is such a, you know, a big thing to be accused of. And he did not win that lawsuit. Yeah. In the me too era, like it just shows that Warner brothers wasn't going to mess around and have Mm -hmm. this on their publicity tours like this wasn't something that they wanted associated with this movie and yet he's only shot one one day of shooting and he will get paid that whole salary so he still gets the money they get to kind of separate themselves from johnny depp when it comes to like the johnny depp redemption tour it's just it's interesting that the son the the lawsuit against the son for the defamation case of calling him a wife beater like for a judge to have heard amber heard's testimony and the detailed accounts and to say you know what like we're going to rule against Johnny Depp. It doesn't bode particularly well. Mm -hmm. And when you have something like the fantastic beast, like they want five movies. So you don't want this hanging over it either. And actions have consequences. So we'll see. I'm I'm surprised. I know it was allegedly been for for the longest time, but I'm surprised that it took this long for something like like this to happen because this has been out there for, I think like four or five years now. And so they've been going through this legal battle. And this was just like the last lawsuit that Johnny, that Johnny Depp countersued of saying defamation for the wife beater part. It's not about anything else from the previous stuff. So I was shocked that it took so long. Um, I'm not calling for someone's career to end, but if someone needs some help, because we do know that, you know, alcoholism that she, Amber Heard has accused them of being an alcoholic and some drugs being might, might have having to be been involved. And there's been other people. It's been really, really messy in their divorce of different people who cheated on who I'm just shocked that it took 2020 because this has been out there for a minute. And so that has been lingering around Johnny Depp for a minute. I haven't even heard of Fantastic Beast. Like, I've never heard of that. that. Oh, it's, it's the it's Harry cool Potter movie. offshoot. It's pretty cool. Oh, but did I it make a lot of money? Even yeah, it makes, it makes tons Howard. of money. Yeah. I've never even seen the preview. Yeah. Have preview you ever seen it. any of the Harry Potter no. movies? No. So, Is like, it, oh. you're, you're out of the loop on that. Yeah, but I usually I see, yeah. like, a preview. I'm like, oh, you're going to go see Fantastic Beast? No one's ever asked me that. <laughs> <laughs> No they knew, they the knew the answer before. Probably. They, the answer. they were like, no, no point. But like even J.K. Rowling, um, she had kind of stuck by Johnny Depp back in 2017. Mm-hmm. And now she didn't even push back. And granted, she's got all sorts of problems of her own. So she probably doesn't want to be attached to she anything does. controversial right now. Uh, and Disney already like took care of it with the next Pirates movie because yeah. it's going to be a female led one with Margot Robbie. So. Yeah, but he gets to keep that money. That is, uh, some people are saying, should he have done it? But that's like, that's a great contract. Because if you don't have something like yeah. that in your contract, then you can't fight it and that you deserve the money. And that's why, you know, having these lawyers is always really, really important. Uh, always important to have. Yeah, I would like one for any potential situation. Like, he doesn't have to do any work and he gets it no matter what. Even if the movie hadn't been made, if you take all of this out of the equation, mm-hmm. he would still get paid the eight-figure salary without doing a drop of work. So how much is it? I don't even have it written it down. It just says eight. It just says eight, eight figures. Figure. <laughs> Great. Yeah. They don't want, they don't want us to know how much he's really getting paid because that, that's for another story for another day of, um, should have many made. more figures than mine. <laughs> yeah. And it, I, I read a couple, I read a couple of tweets and different things that people are saying, like if this was a, if this was a female, if this was a woman, a male is to get treated very differently. But that's for another story for another day. We always know that's, that's always a conversation to have. Yeah. Let's do a little double tap or, Nah, to end the show today. Uh, if you didn't see this, it was incredible yesterday. The greatest golf shot 
maybe of all time. Out of that, like that but might not happen all the time. The the standard rule is if you get a hole in one, you got to buy drinks for everybody in the clubhouse. Oh, that's what it is. So that's what it is <laughs> to to try and discourage people lying on their scorecards. It's okay, you got this hole in one, buy everybody drinks. So I, I'm assuming my man <laughs> had to buy everybody drinks. We saw that at St. Jude Classic. I can't remember who got the hole in one a couple of years. It was back. Ke- oh oh CJ, it was Kevin Tway. And he bought beer for the entire media room. And so oh. we come into work that day, and there's just a giant case of McLobe Ultra, and some were consumed throughout the day. It was a lovely gift. I will never forget Kevin Tway for that moment. Were any shotgun, Jessica? Oh, no, there weren't any shotguns. <laughs> please, no. I couldn't risk getting no. it on my face. She only, she only graces yeah. us with that, with the, with that, with the shotgun. Now, is that who you, is that who, is that who everyone has picked to win? I can't remember. Who did Brevin pick to win? Right. Bryson DeChambeau okay. is the favorite. Okay, so no, we didn't pick him. All right, let's move to a funny video as well. We haven't talked about the Kardashians in a long time, but we're talking about Kris Jenner's boyfriend, Corey Gamble. We're, get, we're still getting footages from that island vacation that they took everyone to get back to their normal life. That is Tristan Thompson. He is dancing away, which I'm not surprised because Tristan is, his mom is Jamaican, and so I feel as when you're Jamaican, you, 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 your hips just move differently. But it wasn't Tristan that surprised everyone. Here, check out Corey's moves. Oh, he's going to do he's gonna the best do it. move coming up. I'm waiting for it. I knew it's something good was coming. Up. Whoa. Boom. He did the splits. He did the splits. Corey Gamble is in his 40s, uh, and then he just jumps right back up. He doesn't need help. That was what I saw. You see Lala, she's like, I'm done. I'm done. I, you sh- I should have known Corey had something when he had – First of all, it's the orange shirt. The way it's like it's you know three buttons unbuttoned. He got that gold chain, and when he when he was winding up, that's that wind up of an old man who's like, I'm coming, I'm coming for you. But I did not know, I did not know he had it like that. I, Chris Jenner. <laughs> now I know why, Chris. Now I know. I know why. <laughs> man, if you can drop into the James Brown like split period. I'm so jealous of people who are flexible at all, and this is like such a fun party trick that I will never be able to do. But probably <laughs> is it a party him. trick? <laughs> yes, it's a trick. It's I, a trick, all I right. Have <laughs> weird. I know some. I wouldn't call them friends, but I have like people who I know from high school who will randomly a TikTok. I guess not a party trick, but like a TikTok trick that now all of a sudden everyone wants to show off that they can do the split still, and I'm like, oh, cool. Well, so you have friends who do tricks, and then you have yourself who's doing shotguns. I mean, yeah, here we go. It checks out. All right, let's hustle up and get up out of here today. Like always, you get the Chris Vernon Show. It's Wednesday, so Devin Walker will be joined to do his entertainment report and talk about the latest music and culture and pop stuff going around. And it's 11-11. So it's a cool day. So you should make a wish at Mm -hmm. 1111 on 1111. It is also Veterans Day. So we want to thank all those who have served and all who continue to serve. This is a day for you. Yes, we send you all of our best. And like always, we will see you bright and early tomorrow morning. This has been Rise and Grind with Jessica and Megan. Tune in live daily at 8 a.m. or on demand by heading to GrindCityMedia.com or Grind City Media on YouTube.